Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Please forgive the very long absence, but if you watched my update video I posted a few months ago, you'll know that the reason I've been gone is because I've been working on a movie. Something that I wrote, directed, did the camera work for it, did the editing for it, and did so much more with the project. It's been monopolizing much of my time, but I'm happy to say that the movie is finally finished. It's a little horror movie called Enjoy, and it's about snuff films. I'm working on showing it at a few local theaters and sending it out to some film festivals, but the movie is finally done, and if you're at all curious, the trailer for it is right there. I'll keep you posted on the movie and other projects that I have planned in the future. Also in my update video, I asked what kind of top 10 list you guys would like to see. And a few people mentioned killer animal movies. And I thought that would be a lot of fun to do. I have a soft spot for killer animal movies. And you have so many great ones like Cujo, Arachnophobia, and the greatest killer animal movie of all time, Jaws. Can't forget about those. They're all great, great horror movies. But since this is a channel that focuses on exploitation films and since I've been gone for a long time, I wanted to focus on grindhouse cinema. You won't be seeing Jaws on the list or bigger budget movies or modern movies because I wanted to focus solely on exploitation films and really sink my teeth into the grindhouse again. So don't take this list too seriously. This is a video about grindhouse movies from a grindhouse fan. Number 10, The Last Shark. <laughs> For those of you upset about Jaws not being included, well, here's the Italian version. Back in the day, Italian movies were very fad-oriented, much like American movies today. If you went to a company, they wouldn't ask, what's your movie like? They would ask, what movie is your movie like? And The Last Shark is one of the many rip-offs to come out during this time. <laughs> This movie is fun for its cheese factor. Picture a fast food version of Jaws. The shark is very cheap looking, and when I first saw it, I burst out laughing. This is one for the bad movie fans. Jaws is a great movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, but Jaws ripoffs can be a lot of fun. Who doesn't like a killer shark movie? Number 9, Grizzly. <laughs> Speaking of Jaws ripoffs, here's one where you make the shark into a bear and put him in the woods. The tagline of this movie is literally Jaws with claws, and that's basically what it is. This movie hits almost the same notes as Jaws, but it still stands on its own. You've got some nice bear action and plenty of good kills. <laughs> And do you remember that scene in Jaws 2 where the shark attacks a helicopter? Well, you've got that here with a bear. If you're not sold at that point, then you don't have a campy bone in your body. How do you live? I'd have to say this is the best killer bear movie based off of a killer shark movie that I've ever seen. Number 8, Orca. If you loved the movie Free Willy growing up, well here's the story if Willy went on a rampage. This is basically a revenge movie, where the whale is the one out for revenge. Yeah, the plot is pretty out there. A group of fishermen want to capture a killer whale to put it on display, and as a result they accidentally kill the mate of a rather angry male, and, get ready for this, cause it to miscarriage. That's what you're in for, people. Killer whale abortions. So it's payback time as the whale goes after the people who killed the mammal he loved. I'm okay now! <laughs> As silly as the plot sounds, it's actually pretty damn good. It's well shot, and the killer whale scenes are obviously the highlight. For those of you who are fans of the show Whale Wars, pop this one in, you'll probably be satisfied. Number 7, Day of the Animals. This here's an animal rights activist's wet dream. Global warming causes the animals in a state park to revolt. Not just hawks, wolves, and bears, but the cute cuddly pets go ballistic too. The animal scenes are great, but hands down the scene stealer is Leslie Nielsen. Most people know him for his comedies, but not many people know he actually plays a really good scumbag. I killed a man for you. I owe you. 
I own you. Now get up. Get up. He's the villain of the film, the one who's so hell-bent on survival that he loses it. There's even a scene where he wrestles a bear. How can you not want to see that? This is one of the best Nature Strikes Back movies, and it's only rated PG, so it's fun for the whole family. God, I miss 70s PG. <laughs> Number 6, Phase 4. Ordinary ants of different species were doing things ants don't do. Meeting. Communicating. Apparently making decisions. Yet another movie with a pretty <laughs> plot, but if you can get past the ridiculous concept, you're in for a good time. Basically, a cosmic event causes all the ants in the world to grow some form of intelligence and form one large colony. They start to organize and slowly start attacking the rest of the world, and a group of scientists lock themselves in a lab to try and figure out what's going on. And like I said, despite the batshit crazy plot, it's a good movie. Not very action-packed, but very interesting. The ants don't get so intelligent that they talk and walk on two legs, but it's an intelligence that, for as goofy as it is, makes sense for a species like this. I like it when a movie can take something so out there and make you say, yeah, I'll go along with this, it's entertaining me. If we can have at least four movies where sharks get sucked up into a tornado and rain down on people, then we can have a movie where ants become intelligent and try to take over the world. Who's the with me? came, it was almost unnoticed because it happened to such a small and insignificant form of life. Number five, Roar. But you could get kids. The cat's got a little excited. Yeah, that's all. Oh. I've already reviewed this movie, but I don't care. Everyone needs to see this. The plot doesn't really matter too much. All you need to know is you have real actors alongside about 200 lions and other big cats. Real, wild, untrained lions. The actors and crew worked alongside these animals without anything separating them from the claws. Oh. What do I do now? Just stand up to them. Don't let them get away with anything. You gotta let them see how strong you are. No animals were harmed in the making of this movie. Seventy members of the cast and crew were. I am amazed that no one died making this movie. It's one of the most intense films I have ever seen in my life, and there is no way in hell a movie like this would be made today. Pop this into the player and prepare yourself for a very dangerous ride. Wow. Are you okay? Wow. You're crazy. Wow. Number four, Night of the Lepus. Attention. Ladies and gentlemen, attention. There is a herd of killer rabbits headed this way, and we desperately need your help. Yep, you heard right, folks. Giant killer bunny rabbits. That's all I need to say. I love this movie, and I used to own rabbits when I was a kid, so that adds to the enjoyment. Now, I'm just going to say this outright. This movie is so much better than it has any right to be. People tend to write this movie off because the idea is so stupid. I mean, it's killer rabbits for Christ's sake. But I can't bring myself to say this is one of those so bad it's good movies because there's really nothing bad about it, apart from the ridiculous plot. <laughs> The miniatures are well made, the acting is good, and the plot is, well, fucking goofy, but it's still fun. And it actually doesn't fall into the typical monster movie cliches. Like the sheriff not believing the scientists about the situation. Here, the sheriff is open-minded to the idea of giant killer rabbits. I feel like such a tool trying to push this movie. But I swear it's good. Okay, moving on. Number three, eaten alive. Not to be confused with the Italian movie of the same name. This one was directed by Toby Hooper after he did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It involves this crazy owner of a hotel in the middle of a swamp, and of course he has a pet crocodile. One thing we can't forget is that this is one of the first roles of none other than Robert Englund, Freddy Krueger himself as a sleazy redneck horn dog, and of course Marilyn Burns of Texas Chainsaw Massacre fame once again getting roughed up by a hillbilly. The croc may look cheap, but it works with the creepy, dirty vibe of the movie. This is a classic exploitation film where you can just feel the sleaze coming off the screen. Well worth a watch for any lover of the grindhouse. Oh, 
Number two, the black cat. Hey, I'm an Italian exploitation fan, so I gotta represent on my list. Yet another movie with a plot that sounds ridiculous, but it's actually good. And I mean really good. The film follows a man who is able to speak with the dead, and he uses the spirits to possess his cat so Kitty can go kill people. Or something like that. Okay, so the plot is kind of all over the place, but what makes this movie good is the camera work and atmosphere. <laughs> This movie was directed by horror master Lucio Fulci, and it has his usual flair. Not as gory as his other movies, but still worth a watch. The cat in this movie is a fucking monster. He comes at people with ripping claws and an angry meow. If you can get past the fact that the killer in this movie is a cute little kitty, then you're in for a good movie. About a killer kitty cat. No! So we've had killer sharks, killer bears, killer ants, killer kitty cats, which brings us to my number one favorite killer animals movie. Let's really sink our teeth into this one. Number one, Piranha. Nowadays, whenever people hear this title, the first thing that comes to mind is Piranha 3D. I did like that movie, but how can anybody forget the original Piranha? It's about a quiet river system and a happy lakeside town that gets invaded by genetically altered Piranha. And I love this movie. This isn't just my favorite killer animal movie after Jaws, it's one of my top 10 favorite 70s horror movies. One of my favorite things about this movie is that the first bloodbath is a bunch of kids. That's right, kids. Jaws killed one child, this movie kills a bunch. That takes some balls. The effects are a lot of fun and I just love the piranha action. And for those of you who say this is just a silly B movie, well yeah it is, but you have hundreds of killer animal movies coming out today that aren't half as good as Piranha, or many of these movies from the 70s. I really wish people would put more care into killer animal movies today. I'm not expecting anything to be as good as Jaws, but at least give me something as good as Piranha. Let's get some more classic movies where animals eat people. Bring the genre back to the glory it had in the 70s. They're here, and they're hungry. Piranha. So there you have it, my top 10 favorite killer animal movies. I'm so happy to be back here on YouTube. I want to keep the videos coming, and don't forget to check out the trailer for the movie that I've been working so, so hard on. This is your buddy Justin here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. God, I miss doing this.